Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. The Lord's going to... Do you guys know that the Lord will reward you for what you do? Do you know he'll reward you when, when you give to the work of the Lord? You go, Lord, I want to honor you. Here, I'm giving to the work of the Lord. Wherever he tells you to. This isn't me pleading for your money. I'm just saying, wherever he tells you to give and you give, he rewards you. He's faithful. He's, he's, you can, I found this out a long time ago. I can never outgive God. You know, some people, they laugh because they find out that I, as a pastor, I get my money from the tithes, right? And then I tithe. They're like, that's like weird, you know. I go, no, it's not. Because in the book of, of Leviticus, the priests that received all of their income from the tithes of Israel, from the other tribes, the whole tribe of Levi was to be supplied by the love gifts of the rest of the tribes. But do you guys know that even the priests, the Levitical priests in the Old Testament, had to tithe? Why do you think God wanted even the priests to tithe? I mean, they got all their money from the tithes. Someone said, it's God's in the first place, she said. And it's part of our honoring him in our lives. I mean, what kind of leader, spiritual leader, are you if you tell people give, but you don't give? And trust the Lord when you give. You know, sometimes the Lord will have us where, where <laughs> I hear this all the time, Pastor, I can't afford to tithe. You know what my answer is, right? I can't afford not to. I mean, seriously, every time I tithe, every time I tithe or give even beyond that, that's called offerings, tithes and offerings, if I give a little more than the 10% mark of respect to the Lord, I can never outgive him. I give to the Lord's work, and he goes, okay, you think you did good? Watch this. And he gives you, <laughs> he gives you back more. Jesus said it. Give, and it will be what? given to you. Good measure, he says, pressed down, shaken together, running over is what you'll receive when you give. But we have such a selfish society. People, they don't really, th they think, oh, that's nice, that philanthropist guy, he gave a little money. Usually the guy that gave a little money, those philanthropists, they got like a billion dollars and they gave ten dollars. So you're like, well, great, you gave some money. You know, like, I mean, they could have given enough ten thousand dollars and it's like still giving pocket change. But Jesus saw a widow put in two pence, little, little, we say like an eighth of a penny. And Jesus said of that woman, remember about this story when she was there at the temple? He said, you see this one? There was another guy with big chunks of gold coins dropping him into the basket one time. Ting, ting, ting. Look at me, everyone. I'm giving to God. And Jesus says, I tell you that that woman gave more than this man. And they were like, no way. He gave all those gold coins. What did Jesus say? She gave out of all that she had to live on. He gave out of his surplus. God looks at the heart. She was pleasing to God. She was giving God, this is all I have, but I want to honor you. It's a mark of respect. You know, for some reason, our pocketbook seems to be a real bone of contention in our society of, you know, what pastor, you talk about anything about God, but don't talk about my pocketbook. You know, that's hitting a little too close to home, you know. I'm like, I'm sorry, but God is the God Almighty, and we're supposed to honor him. And even I tithe to honor him. And I, I have to tell you, I can't afford not to. Because it's when I do that and give him the honor due him that he does these little cool miracles. Everyone's like, well, I wish those miracles happened to me. I'm like, well, just honor him. I mean, just give it a, you know, give it a spin. Try it. Do you guys know that this is the only place in the whole of this Bible? Old and New Testament combined, there is only one passage that says you are allowed to test the Lord in one thing. You get to try him out on one thing. It's found in the book of Malachi. Malachi says, try me in this. Bring in the whole tithe. 
to honor me. And if you bring in the tithe to honor me, see if I, this is God speaking, will not open the windows of heaven and pour out on you blessings until, there, until you have no more need. Not no more want. I don't, you know, name and claim it's like to spin this a little crooked here. That's not what it didn't say no more wants. Your needs will be met if you honor God. And it's the only place. I mean, you, can anyone find me another place where you get to test God? Where God actually invites you and says, go ahead, try it out. Go ahead, test me in this. You honor me and see if I won't take care of you. I found every time I honor the Lord, the Lord takes care of me. And a lot of times, it kind of blows my mind because I'm like, Lord, this doesn't make sense in the natural mind. You know, last week when we, when we went to Arizona, when, when Aaron was teaching for us, it was Sunday, the previous Sunday, got home after church and, you know, we spoke to Jan's dad. He'd been in the hospital for over a week and all I could hear in my head was his words from years ago. He said, don't, send, don't worry about sending her when I'm, when I'm dead. It's not going to, you know, you don't, don't waste the money to come see me when I'm in the casket, he said. I would rather that she comes, this is his daughter. You know, my father-in-law is telling me, I, Bob is his name, Robert. He, he's like, T I just call him Pops. But Pop says, just, um, just send her while I'm alive. I'd rather see her when I'm alive. And so for years, it's been in my mind that get, every once in a while, that little, that little voice reminds me, remember what he said? Rather see her when she's alive. And I'm, I got home after church two couple Sundays ago, and all I could hear in my head was, he would rather see her alive. And he's been in the hospital all week. It's been a rough week. He just got out. And I looked at Jan and said, you know what? I feel like we're supposed to buy tickets to go to, to um, the main. Now, her brother had a friend who had offered us m airline miles from their, you know, to use my airline miles. And I was like, you know, it's really weird. You could check. She goes, I'll check with my brother to see if that person, they're over in California, if they still could use the miles. And the whole time I'm waiting, it's not like happening, you know. And this little voice is going, just buy the ticket. You ever had it like real clear, you know you're supposed to do something. And you're like, but, uh, you know, that's a, like a, that's a pa-ching, you know, that's a lot of money, Lord. I got to put on the card and you just buy the ticket. And I'm like. So she's calling, and I'm waiting, and I got Expedia open, and I've got the window ready to check out, and I'm, like, waiting. Any word yet? No word. Finally, I just go, I don't feel like I'm supposed to wait. I feel like the Lord's saying, just do it. He's got it covered. And I was like, it doesn't make sense, okay? I know this is going to sound weird, but, but I, I already honor the Lord. I already tithe, but I'm just, oh, I guess we'll just do it. And so I bought the ticket on Sunday to leave on Monday. They're not cheap either when you do that, you know, one day advance thing. And I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, this doesn't make sense in my natural mind. Cuckoo. But I, but you know, I got to obey. Plus, how do I tell everyone else to obey if I don't obey? You know, like, okay, guys, go do as I say, but not as I do. I'm a terrible example. You know, I mean, no, I got to show you. So I buy the ticket. We go to Arizona, stay 10 days. Aaron covers for me the next Sunday. Which, praise the Lord, he's so flexible. Aaron, we're leaving. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. He was already ready. He told me. I was like, okay. I'm going. Of course, when I get there, I, 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 t I, was, uh, I was ready for John Higgins because he always says, be instant in season and out of season. So I texted him at 930 on my way to the service. I'm ready just in case you pull a fast one. You know, because I know him. Well, I got there. And he didn't get the text because he was already, you know, at the church getting stuff set up and he didn't check his phone. So he didn't know till after. So afterwards, he sticks me on the Wednesday night service, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is fine. You know, I knew it was coming. Something was going to happen for sure. So I do the Wednesday night service. And when we're all done, he's like, hey, guys, there's a Palo Verde beetle outside the office window. You want to see it? And it, if those of you haven't seen a Palo Verde be beetle, it looks like a ginormous roach. Okay, I mean, like about this big, okay? I'm not exaggerating. And, and this one was a baby one. It was only like that big. So Jan, this fella, Dale, goes out there, and, and he's from Alaska. He's like a gruffy guy. He's a really nice brother and real apologetics for the faith kind of guy. He goes up and just puts his hand in front of it. 
and puts his other hand behind it and shoes it along up onto his arm, and it comes right on it. Now, you don't want to startle them because they have these, like, they chew wood, you know, under the ground in the Palo Verde tree. But um, he, he gets it on his arm, and it's going up his arm, and then he cuts it off with this arm. It goes on that arm. He cuts it off. And Jane's like, I want to try it. So my wife goes over. Dale's like, wow, a girl that wants to try it. Here you go. Just put your hand there, and he right onto her, and she, get a picture, get a picture. So I get a picture. People were grossed out. She put it on Facebook. Turn to change your Facebook page, you know. Because uh, it's bigger, as big as her hand, you know. On her little hand, it looked really big. And I was like, <laughs> I'm laughing. You know, Lord, this is the weirdest thing. You told me to do this, and I don't know. And we've been here now 10 days, and I taught for Higgins. And I sat there and went, Lord, I don't, I don't get it. But, you know, I've, I feel like I'll, if I had the privilege to take my father-in-law back and forth to all his doctor's appointments. I'm the doctor shuttle. I mean, you made me go all the way from Hawaii to Arizona just to drive back and forth to different appointments and sit in waiting rooms. I had lots of time to read my Bible in the waiting room, you know, and seek the Lord. And then the next day, another waiting room, do it again. And I mean, it was just like every day. I thought, well, there must be something to this. And at the end... At the end, I don't know this, but um, someone handed Jan a check folded and said, here, this is for you, for the church. And she doesn't look. She always, that, that's not her thing. She's just like, here, honey, someone gave you this. And, oh, yeah, and someone else handed me another one. So she hands me two checks. I'm like, oh, that's nice, two pieces of paper folded. Except when I opened the two pieces of paper, it paid for the whole ticket. And the food, and the rent the car, and everything that we spent from those two pieces of paper in my hand. And the Lord goes, do you see? Duh. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm really glad I listened. So now I can tell everybody else, you should listen. Because they don't believe that you're real. But I know you're real, because you keep doing this stuff, like, all the time. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.